Here's some examples from the uh, day 60 assignment where we're continuing to work with camp compound probability. Uh, in this case, it's uh, going to be conditional probability and and probability. So here they give us a two-way frequency table. There's 80 people at random, and it's comparing where they live to uh, how they prefer to get around town. And is uh, is the event that a person prefers public transportation independent or um, or dependent of living in the city? So the way that you would check to see if two events are independent, that means that their combined probability should be the product of the two. So in order to be independent, see, is the event that a person prefers public, public transportation independent of the, 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 the event that they live in the city? So public transportation, people that prefer public transportation is 35 out of 80. And if you multiply that um, times... Uh, living in the city is 34 out of 80. That should give you the same thing as the joint frequency, which would be um, people that live in the city preferring public transportation, which is 26 out of um, out of 80. Wait, that's not gonna make sense. Is the event that a person prefers public transportation independent of the event that the person lives in the city? So that's 35. Yeah. 35 out of 80 times. Okay. Yeah, that should be right. It should be right. Let's see. So if we were to multiply these two, the uh, the 35 and the 80, I can reduce by 5, uh, which is 7 over 16. 34 and 80 can be reduced by 2, which is 17 over 40. Nothing else here can be reduced. So this gives me uh, 7 times 17 is 139 over... 16 times 40 is 640, and that should be the same as 126 over 80. Now, that can be reduced also. That's the same as saying uh, 13 over 40. So it doesn't look like these are going to be the same, um, but to check, we can check the cross products. 139 times 40 would have to be the same as 640 times 13. So one. 39 times 40 is 55.60. 640 times 13 is 83.20. Those are not equal, so those are not independent events. Is not. A jar contains marbles of various colors. Suppose you randomly draw one uh, as the color of the marble. How many marbles? So what is the probability that you draw a red marble first and a blue marble second? Let R be the event of drawing the red marble first and B be the event of drawing the blue marble. Okay, so when it comes to picking marbles, you want to see if there's replacement. So does it say anywhere that, uh, ah, here you go. After you put that marble back in the jar, you randomly select. So you, you put it back in the jar. You, you pick one marble from the jar, um, and then you put it back. So that's what makes these independent. If I put the marble back, there's the same amount of marbles for the second try as there was for the first try. So they want to know what is the probability of picking a, um, a red marble first and a blue marble second. Okay, so for the red marble first, there are 19 red marbles out of in total. Uh, how many did they, they didn't tell you? So you have to add them. 19 plus 15 plus 12 plus 14 is 60. There's 60 marbles, so 19 out of 60 times, because you put it back, um, blue would be 14 out of um, out of the same 60. So let's see here. This becomes a two. This becomes sorry, that becomes a seven. This becomes a 30. It looks like nothing else can be reduced, and. 
enter it as a percent to the nearest tenth of a percent. So I shouldn't even be reducing anyway. I should just multiply. 19 times 7 equals is 138 divided by 30 times 60, which is 1,800. 138, no, 133. Oh, I can't even see. 133 divided by 1,800. Divided by 1,800 is 133 divided by 1,800. Is about seven point three or seven point four percent. Approximately seven point four percent to the nearest tenth. Okay, so more jars of marbles. They want what is the probability that you draw a yellow marble both times? So is there replacement? Yeah, there is. It says after you put the marble back in the jar. So these are independent events. So what's the probability of picking two yellows? Well, there's um, there's 60 marbles again here. So 15 over 60 times 15 over 60. Now both of these can be reduced because this is 1 over 4 times 1 over 4. So you have a 1 in 16 chance. They want this as a percent again, to the nearest tenth of a percent. So 1 divided by 16 is 6.3%. 6 You spin a spinner shown two times. Each section of the spinner is the same size. Use this information to answer the question. What's the probability that the spinner stops on a three first and a four second? Okay, so um, because each spin is independent from the one before, it's not affected. It's not like you're removing spaces. So in total, there are, I see, um, two threes in total. So there's two threes out of 12 total spaces times the four is uh, one, two, there's still also two fours, yep, so that's one over six times one over six, which gives you one over 36. They want that as a percent again, so the nearest tenth of a percent, I prefer fractions, 2.8 percent approximately. Find the probability of getting heads on every toss of a coin when the coin is tossed four times. Okay, so since these are independent tosses, the probability of getting heads all four times is one half on the first toss times one half on the second toss times one half on the third toss times one half on the f on the fourth toss, also known as one half to the fourth power. This gives you one over 16. If you were to try this 16 different times, you should get all four heads one time, theoretically. You are randomly choosing cards one at a time with replacement. That's important. That's what makes this independent. When you see without, uh, without replacement, then that makes this dependent. But okay, so these are independent events. Uh, they tell you what each event is, so they want to know what is the probability of getting. Um, uh, let's see, enter. Let's just read it. Um, it will be random. Let four be the event of choosing a four as the first card. R is choosing a red card. Second and F complement is the choose. Uh, is that you're getting that you're not getting a face card in the third find the probability that you choose a four then a red and then not a face card remember that face cards are jacks queens and kings okay so these are independent events uh there are four fours in a deck so that's four over 52 times since you put everything back a red card there are um well, half the cards are red so this, there's a 
uh, 26, 26 red cards, but I can just put one half. I can already reduce that to be um, one half. And, um, and you know what? The four over 52, I can also reduce that. There's one out of 13. So there's um, 13 different types of cards. The four is one of them. And then times not getting a face. So out of all the different cards, there's 13 different types of cards. If three of them are faces, that means 10 of them are not faces. So I would multiply this. Uh, I can cancel out here the 2 with the 10. So that gives me 5 over 169. 13 times 13 is 169. 5 over 169, but they want this as a percent. So 5 divided by 169. is uh, about 3.0%. They want it to the tenth of a percent, 3.0, so it's 3%, but I have to put the point. Determine whether these events are independent. Okay, so um, the owner of a bookstore collects data about reading preferences of 60 chosen customers. Determine whether being a female and preferring fiction are independent events. Okay, so there are 25 females in total out of 60 times preferring fiction. There are 36 people that prefer fiction out of 60, and that would have to be equal to females that prefer fiction out of 60. So uh, let's see. Let's try to reduce here. This uh, can be reduced by 5, so that's 5 over 12, this becomes um, 6 over 10, but that can still go more. So by 12, that's 3 over 5. I can still get these 5s to cancel and give me 1s. I can get the 3 and the 12 to cancel, so I get 1 over 4 on this side. After all that, that's 1 over 4. 15 over 16 also gives me 1 over 4. So yes, these are independent. Okay, in a mall, we're surveying 120 shoppers to find out uh, if they wait for a sale or not and if they're a man or a woman. So let, a, let W be the event that a shopper is a woman and S be the event that the shopper typically waits for a sale. Are W and S independent or dependent? Okay, so let's do part A, which is um, let W, the shopper is a woman. So there are 40 women out of 120 times waiting for a sale. Let us be that they wait for a sale. So there are 70 people that wait for a sale out of 120. That would have to be equal to women that wait for a sale, which is 30 over 120. So this uh, reduces to 1 over 3. The year the zeros cancel, which stays at 7 over 12. So I get here 7 over 36. Uh, on the other side, I get 1 over 4. Those are not equal. 7 over 36 and 1. So since when you multiply them, you do not get the intersection. These are dependent. Since you know, find the probability of W on the condition of S and S on the condition of W, which of these two conditional probabilities can you multiply with PW with the probability of W to get the probability of uh, the intersection and which can you multiply which of the two can you multiply with probability of s to get okay fun all right so let's see this let's go one at a time so let's first find probability of w on the condition of s so if we already know that s has occurred which is waiting for a sale that limits the sample to 70 so the probability of women so the probability of women on the condition of S is 30 over 70, which gives me 3 over 7. Okay. The probability of waiting for a sale on the condition of being a woman, the, the, um, the total women is 40, and then people waiting for a sale that are women are 30, 
So that's 3 over 4. So let's put that already. This is 3 over 7. This is 3 over 4. So what can you multiply the probab multiplying the probability of women times um times what gives you the probability of, of a woman being so that would have to be um if if the the pro uh, yeah if the probability of being a woman and waiting for a sale divided by the probability of being a woman is the one that gives you where the bottom one is the one that you know occurred that's so that's the probability of um of waiting for a sale on the condition of being a woman so if you were to multiply both sides by the probability of being a woman that's what would leave you with just the intersection. So it would be the S first and then the W. And then the other one's backwards. There are two green, eight red, six yellow marbles in a bag. You choose a marble without looking, but and you put it aside. Okay, so here there is replacement. You are putting it off to the side. Then you choose another marble without looking. Use the multiplication rule. Uh, we learned this is also like the uh, the fundamental counting principle um, to uh, to find the specified probability. So the probability that you chose a red marble followed by a yellow marble. Okay, so if the first one was red, there would be eight reds at the time out of 2 plus 8 plus 6 is 16 marbles. Times, if you took that red out and you left it out, now there's only 15 marbles left, and followed by a yellow, there would have still been all six yellows there. So that probability, let's, let's reduce. This gives me here one half. This can still be reduced. Uh, let's see, let's do this. gives me... Um, Six over fifteen divided by three. This gives me two. This gives me five. Then I could still get the twos to cancel out, so I'm left with one over five. There's a one in five chance of that happening. There are six green, 12 red, and six yellow marbles in a bag. Each time you choose a marble, you put it aside. So this is the same thing saying without replacement. There is no replacement. So what's the probability of choosing three red marbles? Okay. So the first time I look for a red marble, there's 12 red marbles out of, in total, 24 times. But the second time, there's only going to be not only 23 total marbles, but I've lost a red marble because I already picked one. Then the last time, there's only going to be 10 red marbles left out of 22. So let's see if we can multiply that. This gives me one half. This gives me a divide of five over eleven. I can still get the elevenths to cancel. So this is a one and a one. Uh, so on the top we have one times five, which is five, and on the bottom we have two times twenty-three, which is forty-six. So there's a, a five out of forty-six chance. The table shows the sums that are possible when you roll two number cubes and add the numbers. Let A be the event that you roll a six 
on the number cube represented um, by the row labeled six, and let B be the event that that the sum of the number cubes is seven. Are these events independent or dependent? Um, and then complete the explanation. So of the 36 outcomes on the entire table, the sum of seven appears six times. So the probability of event happening, of event B happening, would be those six times, those six sevens, divided by the total amount of probabilities, which is 36. So actually six out of 36 would be one over six. Let's put one out of six. One over six, because that's six sevens out of 36. Of the six outcomes in the row labeled six, a sum of seven appears once. So the probability of B on the condition of A would be one over six as well. So since the, the conditional probability is equal to the probability of just B occurring, that means that A and B are independent. So think of it this way. If the probability of if conditional probability is the formula is um the probability of both a um intersection b divided by the probability of b all right if um if both of these down here where if, if the probability of B on the condition of A um, is equal to the probability of if these two down here are equal then that means that the that the um, the probability of both occurring is a product that you're just multiplying the two and the type of probability that just requires you to just multiply is independent so yeah these are independent events That's not it. Try again. What did I do wrong? Did they want me to write 6 out of 36? Oh, no. Oh, I left. The, there's more underneath. What is the probability of A on the... Oh, so just 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. They want us to multiply the two. Oh, okay. 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 is 1 over 36.